Do you currently own the DJI Vata and you aren't sure whether to upgrade to the new Vata 2? Or perhaps you're one of the people who don't have either, but you're not sure whether to pick up a secondhand Vata from somewhere like Marketplace, but don't want to get it and regret it because the Vata 2 could be so much better. Well, in this video, I'm going to answer that exact question for you. We're going to be looking at the specs, the quality of the footage, the overall flying experience, and probably how often you are actually going to find yourself getting it repaired. So to begin, let's look at the drones themselves. The drones are almost identical in terms of size, but the Avata 2 is ever so slightly wider. This is down to the main body of the drone being sat slightly lower in between the propellers rather than on top of the propellers like it is on the Avata. Now I'm not sure whether this is to actually help with their overall flying experience. The original Avata did sometimes feel like a bit of a boat. When you're flying in manual mode, it always felt a little bit loose, perhaps a little top heavy, but the Avata 2 feels more dialed in, so to speak. But don't worry because there are actually ways to make the Avata fly much better than it does straight from the factory. And I'll be getting to that part shortly. The Avata weighs 410 grams, whereas the Avata 2 comes in slightly lower at 377 grams. Them 33 grams may not seem like a lot, but 33 grams is almost a 10% decrease on its overall weight. So how does that affect the battery life and the flight times? Now the batteries between these two drones are very different in terms of the size. So you're not gonna be able to take a battery from the Avata and put it in the Avata 2 or vice versa. And the capacity of each of the batteries is also different. The Avata 2 allows you to have 2,150 milliamps per hour, whereas the original Avata is higher at 2,420. But what do all those numbers mean for us mere mortals? Well, a combination of the weight and the battery capacity allows the Avata to hover in no wind for around about 18 minutes. Sometimes a little longer, sometimes a little less, and really it comes down to how many times you've actually used the battery. As we all know, as you use a battery over a period of time, the overall capacity does drop. And with the Avata 2, it's around 22 to 23 minutes. But if I'm honest, I'd take those numbers with a pinch of salt. No matter how you fly the drone, you're always gonna probably have a little bit of wind, and you're gonna fly the Avata different every single time. So those flight times are gonna fluctuate. And regardless of which of the Avatas you use, when you get down to around 30% of the battery left, you get a warning saying that the throttle output is gonna be decreased and you should return to home promptly. Now, another possible contributing factor is the propellers that are on the drones. Whilst the size of propellers in terms of diameter and radius are the same between both of the drones, when it comes to the actual characteristics and how they look, they're very different. For instance, this is one of the propellers from the original Avata. It's got five blades, whereas on the Avata 2, it's only got three blades. The original Avata blades feel a lot more flimsy than what the Avata 2 does. But if I'm honest, I'm just a photographer, a guy who flies drones for a bit of fun. I don't know what any of this really means. But what I will say is the Avata 2 is much quieter than their original Avata. You don't quite get as much of the high-pitched whine. It's still there, but nowhere near as loud. One of the first things I noticed when I got the Avata 2 was how different the frame is in comparison to the Avata. And when I mean frame, I mean the propeller guard that goes around the propellers. Now on the original Avata, this was replaceable. You could and can still buy one of these for around 25 pounds here in the UK. You get it in the post and after taking a few screws off, you can easily swap it out. However, what I will say is that I've actually never broke one. I've crashed this, I've smashed the camera, the GPS unit, set fire to the damn thing, and the frame has still been intact. I actually feel like the frame could survive a nuke at this point. However, the Avata 2, you can't replace for just 25 pounds. In fact, I don't think you can replace the frame of it whatsoever without replacing the entire thing. But when it comes to the Avata 2, will it still only cost 25 pounds? No. I actually don't know how much this will cost, but I know that you can't take this off and replace it yourself. This is gonna have to go back to DJI to get it replaced. So I know it ain't gonna be quite as cheap and easy as replacing the one on this. And for that reason, I suggest that no matter what, if you buy any of the Avatas brand new, you should take out DJI Refresh because it can get pretty expensive if you write one of these off. Now, the biggest upgrade for me when it came to getting the Avata 2 was the camera. On the original Avata, you could either film in normal mode, which is great if you just want to take the footage straight off the memory card and post it on social media or here on YouTube. But if you wanted to get the best dynamic range from the Avata, you could film in D-Cine-like, which is very similar to what we've seen on the Air 2 back in the day, and also the Mini 3. But D-Cine-like still has its limitations, and I always found myself either blowing out the highlights, or if I had to increase the brightness of the dark parts of the image, the shadows, then it 
it always became a little bit mushy. So because of that, a lot of people felt the need to go out and attach an action camera to the top of the Avatar, like the Insta360, a GoPro, or a DJI Action 4. But attaching something like this to the top of the Avatar made it heavier, made the flight times a lot lower, and also made it a lot more top heavy. However, when it comes to the Avatar 2, this can now film in D-Log. There's a few camera settings that I'd recommend you doing to get the very best out of your Avatar 2, which I'm going to be doing a video on in the next few weeks. So if you want to see that, make sure you subscribe to the channel. But having D-Log in a drone massively helps when it comes to getting the very best image because Log is even flatter, so you can retain more information in the brightest parts of the image, like the sky, and the shadows and the very darkest parts of the image. However, with a more flatter image means that there's more color correction that you have to do to make it look vibrant and contrasty like you wanted to. And from what I've read, the camera what's in the Avatar 2 is the same camera as what's from the DJI Action 4. So with that being said, you shouldn't have to attach an action camera to the top of the Avatar 2 anytime soon. Which of the two drones you decide to go for in terms of image quality very much comes down to how comfortable you are when it comes to video editing. But in the images from both of the drones, I always find that they have a magenta look. So I always find myself going into the tint slider and just moving it slightly to the green. The sensor in the Avatar 2 is larger than what's in the original Avatar. So technically it should be sharper and also better in low light conditions. Literally flying the drone on the windiest day ever. So I'm gonna try and answer one of the questions that I get asked most of all in the comments. And that is, what is the range like between these two drones? Unfortunately, I'll be honest, it's really hard for me to answer that question. And that's because I live in the UK. In the UK, we can legally only fly the drones 120 meters away or up until the point you actually don't know the orientation of the drone, which way it's actually facing. So for me to be able to honestly turn around and say which one of these two drones will give you the best range, I can't without breaking the laws and that will just cause a lot of problems in the comments. I don't want to do that. What I will say is today, I'm just in a fairly open field. I've got the forest behind me. I've got plenty of trees around and I could comfortably fly either of these drones within that 120 meter range and maybe only go down to two bars on signal when it comes to the visuals. One thing I will say is I've never lost signal when it comes to the controller. It's always the visual part which goes out first. All of this comes down to line of sight. If you had nothing in between you and your drone, you will fly obviously further before you lose signal than you would if you had trees in front of you. But then you could fly further in a forest than you could inside a building because inside a building, you're gonna have metal, you're gonna have concrete, you're gonna have bricks. And all of those things stop the signal getting from the drone to the controller and the goggles and vice versa. But at the end of the day, it all comes down to where you can legally fly the drone and what you are actually able to do with it. I don't know whether that's answered any questions whatsoever, but there you go. The flying experience between both of these drones are fairly similar. However, I do feel a lot safer, more comfortable. I feel like I could do more risky, daring stuff with the Avatar 2 than what I can with the Avatar 1. But that isn't to say that you can do things with this that you can't with this. Both of these drones need a little bit of tweaking straight out of the box to be able to fly on better when it comes to manual mode. And if you wanna know exactly what that is, then I'll leave this video up here for you to watch that. Both of them feel really smooth and exciting to fly, but the Avata 2 does feel marginally smoother than the Avata. Now, when it comes to the controllers for these drones, both of these drones can be flown using motion controllers and FPV controllers. Regardless of which one you fly with a motion controller, the overall experience will be very similar. You pull the trigger and the drone moves forward and wherever you move the joystick, the drone will move for you. And with the motion controller version two for the Avata and the motion controller version three for the Avata two, you can also move the drone backwards, which is a little bit odd when it comes to FPV drones, but no complaints here. Now the biggest difference when it comes to flying both of these drones with the motion controllers is that with the Avatar 2 and the motion controller version 3, you have access to the easy acro mode. So all the flips and spins and stuff you see in FPV videos, you can do with the Avatar 2 and the motion controller just by using the joystick and you don't have to actually have any skill to do it. Now I don't have a motion controller version two for the Avatar because when I bought the Avatar, it was on the day of the release and the motion controller version two wasn't out yet. And I've never really used a motion controller until recently. And even then it was just for testing the Avatar two. But the differences between the motion controller version one and version two, apart from being able to move the drone backwards with the version two are fairly minuscule. But when you compare both of them to the version three, the version three just seems a little bit more ergonomic. The buttons are in a little bit of a nicer space. The camera angle control is now on a really small wheel, which is convenient place next to your thumb. And 
he just feels better. But between the lot, it's only minor little things. Now, when it comes to the FPV controllers, one thing to know is that you don't have access to easy acro mode that can only be done on the motion controller. But when you look at both of them, they pretty much look identical, apart from the massive antenna, which is on the back of the version two and not on the version three. The controls are the exact same and you still have the custom button, which you can assign to pretty much anything. I'd recommend turtle mode so you can flip the drone off its back onto its front. Or one of the best things is making the ESCs beep for you. So when you inevitably lose it in the long grass, you can hopefully find it a little bit faster than you could without making them beep. Welcome to the world of FPV drones, where you fly it, you crash it, and then you have to find it. It's fucking mint. <laughs> it's just every time, every time. Now, why is there so many different controllers for these two drones, even though they look pretty much the same? And that is where I need to jump in and update this video. Since the release of the Avata 2, the Avata 1 has only been compatible with everything that came out before the Avata 2. Not the version 3 goggles, not the controller version 3 or the motion controller version 3. And when it comes to the Avata 2, it was polar opposite. It wasn't backwards compatible with all the old stuff. So if you were like me and wanted to upgrade from the Avata 1 to the Avata 2, you had to buy everything again. However, today is the 4th of June. And yesterday, someone commented on one of my old Avata 2 videos saying that everything has now changed. Sure enough, check the website for the Avata 2 and they have changed the backwards compatibility for that drone. So now you can fly the Avata 2 using the DJI Goggles 2, the DJI Goggles Integra, DJI RC Motion Controller 2, and the DJI FPV Remote Controller 2. However, nothing has changed when it comes to the original Avata at this moment in time. So now this means if you do have the original Avata, you can easily upgrade to the Avata 2 without having to sell a kidney. Unless you have the OG goggles like I do, in which case you better get yourself onto the black market ASAP. Speaking of goggles, what do the new ones actually feel like and work like? The new goggles feel great and compared to the original goggles that I have, which are the version 2s, they're much smaller and more portable. They're more comfortable and the battery is integral to it rather than having to put it in your pocket. However, there are two other types of goggles which are compatible with the original Vata, which are the DJI Goggles 2, which are different to the version 2s and also the DJI Goggles Integra. More numbers, I know, but neither of them goggles I've owned or used, so I can't really comment on them. Sorry. Now, when it comes to accessories that you can buy for your Avata, you can buy a GoPro mount which goes on top of your Avata, so it makes things a lot more safer when you're attaching something. But one of the biggest upgrades was buying new propellers. Remember how before I said that this is very much like a boat when you're flying it? Well, this helps minimize that. Also, ND filters are pretty much a must have to get the best image quality from your drone. However, the ND filters that fit the Avata, guess what? They don't fit the Avata 2. So regardless, you're gonna have to buy a new set if you buy the Avata 2. So which one of these two drones should you buy if you're buying it first time? Or should you upgrade to this if you already have this? That honestly entirely depends on what you want out of your drone. If you want the best image quality natively from your drone, then the Avata 2 is a no brainer. If you're wanting to have the best flying experience straight out of the box without having to do anything else to the drone, this is the one to go for. However, maybe you don't need the best image quality. Maybe you're still really comfortable attaching a GoPro to your drone. Maybe you just want something to get in the air and just experience FPV and take it steady. If that's the case, the original Vata is not something to overlook, especially when you can replace some of the parts without it costing you an arm and a leg. So now you know which of these two drones you should buy, you now need to know how to fly them. For that, you need to watch this video right here. However, if you wanna get the smoothest flying in manual mode, then watch this one right here. I'll see you soon. 